7-Eleven. I just want to quickly mention, I keep getting comments from this guy, Renisha Shanis. Renisha Shanis. I, I hope I pronounced right. He or she has been constantly leaving comments pretty much saying, do another Captain Underpants video. And I just want to say, like, relax, okay? I'm sorry. This is Third Doctor Month. It was supposed to happen two months ago. But, um, uh... Like, me getting through the rest of Classic Doctor Who alone within the next, like, five years, it feels laughable. But just relax. The, I, I, I have made plenty of Kevin Advance videos. Yeah, I... Uh, I don't know. I, can't, I like, you know, I, I do love it that there are people commenting, well... I mean, like, I have got another thing. I once got a comment saying, like, Do a Captain Underpants video next or I'm gonna unsubscribe! And I was just like... You're gonna have to unsubscribe me, because I've already got a video edited and ready. I do love that there are people who really want to see more of my videos, and, like, I really don't want, like, you know, obviously, like, you know, there are super popular YouTubers with who get, like, tons of comments, and they can't keep up, and they can't respond to every single one of them. And you never know who's, like, being serious and who's just leaving a joke, or, like, obviously, like, leaving, and you're gonna respond, and then they're just gonna keep on responding, and then, yeah, I don't know. I'm not saying that I'm there yet, it's just, you know, I've got like, I've got, I, I do have a schedule, and Third Doctor Month was supposed to happen in March, so now it's happening in May instead, and I, it feels kind of ironic, because the Third Doctor and Second Doctor argued a lot, so now I'm doing a Third Doctor Month? Calm down, Second Doctor, you had your month, like, last year, something, last year, like, three months ago? I don't know. But yeah, the possibility of me getting through classic Doctor Who alone, like, within the next five years is laughably small. I want to do another, well, I, 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 I feel like I should do another reaction to My Name is Rowley, because he, well, he once asked me if I could do reactions to him weekly. Boy, like, I, and, like, I remember back, like, I keep on remembering back when I used to do two videos a week, and I can't even imagine myself doing it now, even now when we're all locked up. Although then again, one of those was always a gaming video, and those are easier to edit, but honestly, like, like, may, may, like, buddies, anyone who's, like, not a teenager yet or has just entered their teenage years, just wait until you, like, start to get older. Like, your mind's just gonna be, like, so consumed. Unless if you're an airhead. I don't mean to be insulting anyone. I also, I also am planning to do... I've, I've got, I've got stuff on the schedule, okay? It, stuff is on the schedule. Every time that uh, someone asks me to do another video, I add it to my schedule. But anyway! On to what this is actually about. Um, I'm probably gonna put the clips of me reacting to the Power of the Dalek Special Edition in between that and then. Yeah. Hey, what's up, guys? It's your problem to my favorite YouTuber here. This is not the day that I'm gonna be filming the video that it says in the title. I'm just filming this as an intro. Uh, just to let you know, just, just I, I don't mean to sound arrogant because I don't want someone to think that my videos are very well made and I'm criticizing them and they'll be like, Oh, how dare you, like, criticize how well-made your videos are. What does that make my videos look like? Does that make my videos look utter crap? I think that's just something that's inherent in almost every one who posts videos. Like, every time that I upload a video, I'm always thinking, like, Oh my god, that video's gonna be the best video. It's terrible. Everyone's gonna hate it. But sometimes I like to look back at my videos to see what kind of feedback it's getting. And I was just looking at my video of the Daleks The Early Years review. Nice little seven likes and one dislike. Hooray! Oh, this guy is amazing, by the way. Clever, um, I, I, Clever Richard Films? Uh, he, he, he's incredible. He makes, like, hour-long documentaries on each Doctor's era. R really worth it. I, I binge-watched all of them. They were that good. I mean, there's nothing really to do. We're stuck in a pandemic. And then I see this guy, Robert Hill. Daleks The Early Years will be on Blu-ray in July on an improved Power of the Daleks release? What? Yeah, I know what Daleks the early years is. What? 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 what, 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 what. How much is it on Amazon? Like, can you still get it? Because I remember when I was really worried that, oh no, I'd be too late. I got Tom Baker years as a present. And I was like, why'd you get this one though? This one's like 30 bucks. John Pertree years are like six bucks. And they're like, oh, sorry. And I'm just like, no, no, don't be sorry. I just, I just, I'm just confused. 1360. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, but I'm looking for the Blu-ray. What the frick, not even the Dallas What? What? Two days ago? Oh no. What? What? 
Oh no. Oh no, why does it look so buyable? It looks so it looks so purchasable. No. No Macrotera. I can't buy your brother the faceless ones or your sister Fury from the deep because like you're gonna be released on one of these soon. And you gotta save Smudgy, Smudgy, what do you think I should do? Smudgy, Smudgy, what do you think I should do? Smudgy, Smudgy, Smudgy. Bro, didn't you already like what the Bro, but I thought they already, like, released a Power of the Dog special edition. Like, yeah, back in 2017, like, literally directly after the original. All right, guys, ready? We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, just screw off Disney+. Plus. Netflix is where it's at. We're gonna read all these special features and see if we can resist buying it. Two new documentaries about the Power of the Daleks. I don't really watch that kind of stuff. The 1993 BBC audio version of The Power of the Daleks, narrated by Tom Baker. <clears throat> when, I, when the Macrotera DVD had the thing of Colin Baker, according to Josh Schneers, he's in character as the Doctor, and he's like remembering the events of the Macrotera. So he's like narrating the Macro Terror as the audio soundtrack plays in the background, but he's like in character. I listened to a little bit of it and it didn't sound like he was in character. And then Josh Nunes also said that there was one of Tom Baker in The Power of the Daleks, but then I looked on my Power of the Daleks DVD and I couldn't find it anywhere. I was like, maybe it's an Easter egg, but I don't even know how Easter eggs work. And then he's all like, oh, well, it's in low quality. And I'm just like, oh my God, does the BBC not understand the lengths that we will go to get Doctor Who stuff? Like, who cares if it's in low quality? Just put it on the thing. Better have it and not use it than need it and not have it. Better have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Except it's not really need it. It's just like... We want it. I just got a text from somebody asking how busy I am. I'm busy! Raw incidental music. I mean, yeah, that's cool. I don't really care about that. Photogram- from a grammetry featurette? Whatever. Wicker's World. I don't like my monsters to have Oedipus complexities. What? The frick is he talking about? Alex the Early Years, a 1992 documentary presented by Peter Davison. I already have that. I don't need it again. I mean, I got the Tom Baker years, but that was on the season. Look, we can wait for the season four Blu-ray to come out. It's probably gonna be like a hundred dollars. And oh my God, how much is the season four Blu-ray gonna be? Like, you don't need to make color animations and black and white animations. You can turn the color down on your TV. And everyone's like, oh, I shouldn't have to do that. They should present black and white animation. Bro, it literally takes 15 seconds. Look at your TV remote. There's something that says settings. You go onto it, go into color. You do, do the thing. I've showed it before. It's there. Sorry, I feel like I'm freaking out way too much more than I should be. Robin Hood? 1953 episode, Patrick Troughton's earliest surviving TV appearance. Ugh, I don't even want that. Why do I want it? This hurts. This honestly hurts my soul. I, 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 I must have it, but I must wait. I must wait for the season four, four Blu-ray to come out. BBC archive footage from BBC Regional News, BBC Breakfast, Blue Peter, and Newsnight. Previously unreleased animation trailers and aminitics. Pre what? 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 Unreleased animation trailers. Okay. Easter eggs. I'm not going to tell you what the Easter eggs are. They're just on there. So please spend three hours searching for them with your remote. I don't know how easy it is Easter eggs to find. I, I'm not even sure if I have a DVD with Easter eggs on it. I'm sure I do. Other features also include audio commentaries by Annika Wills on each episode. What about Fraser? Oh, Fraser Hines is a dentist, sorry. Rest in peace, Michael Craze and Patrick Trouton. Almost beaded the right part of my chest. Animation test footage, photo gallery, including previously unreleased and rediscovered full color onset photos from 1966. Servants and Masters, The Making of the Power of the Daleks, and Doctor Who, The Highlanders? What? Wait, whoa, 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 that last one. Doctor Who, The Highlanders. Ooh. What are you talking about? What, what do you mean, Doctor Who the Highlanders? What do you mean, Doctor Who the Highlanders? This is the top five John Pertwee stories. Plus honorable mentions make it kind of a top ten, but I didn't bother to put numbers six through ten in any sort of order. This, I found, was kind of difficult. Very similar to my second Doctor one, actually, because I knew my number one 
won definitely. I knew my number two won definitely. And then number three to five, I just went back and forth. I, 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 I know I, I know that my second Doctor ones were kind of boring and very dark. Like, like, actually, like, pitch black and dark. I don't think you could even see my face. At one point, they even had every single uh, Season 7 story on here. I know that many people, like, say that Season 7 is one of the best seasons ever of classic Doctor Who, or just of Doctor Who in general. Right next to it, uh, Season 26 and 13, and, uh, Series 4, kind of, too. For good reason, because Season 7 was definitely good, but, like... And it just gets me excited for season 13 and 26 eventually. Uh, it's season 13, I don't know. But yeah, like, it only had four stories, but they just nailed every single one. Like, I, I think it's the only season so far that doesn't have a bad or mediocre story. Like, of the ones that I reviewed so far. But anyway, so, honestly, I'm not even sure if these are my concrete ones, because, okay. Because for the second Doctor, the only ones that I could think of that were bad are... The Highlanders, the Underwater Menace, and the Space Pirates. And then there was like, I didn't I didn't really find the Abominable Snowman, or Fury from the Deep, or even the Wheel in Space, or the Dominators. The Protons was alright. I didn't really find those ones like, enjoy, like, they weren't bad. But anyway, so for my number five pick, I picked, I'm gonna try and get this right. Doctor Who and the Silurians, these VHS transfers. Yeah, I, I just remember watching these and having a really good time watching them. Plus, seeing as how long my videos I'm are, I'm amazed that, like, you know how, like, I react to a little bit, and then I, and then, like, whenever I say something, like, I pause it, just in case if the footage gets corrupted. Which has only really happened twice, but, you know, I'm just worried that's gonna happen again. I should probably do it right now. But yeah, and I'm just, like, and if I haven't said something for a while, I'll just restart the footage anyway. And then with all the footage, I normally have like 40 to 50 minutes, which isn't that bad compared to what a lot of people would probably have. But this for story, I only have 29 minutes, less than half an hour already, back when I had hoped that I could make all my videos less than half an hour. But yeah, I just, that's not really a reason for why I thought it was good. I just thought it was really, really good. I really like the scene where like, they're going around and they're passing the virus and you don't see the virus, but it's just like every time that someone who's infected shakes hands with another person. I know a lot of people are talking about how when this virus is over, they're gonna have the, like, no one should shake hands ever again with a stranger. And I'm just like, I don't know. I don't really think that that should be a rule. I mean, I doubt it's gonna be a rule, but I don't know, is this world going to be better or worse, or just the same? Because I have a feeling that no matter what it is, after a year or so, things are just going to get back to the same. At number four, I had the three Doctors. Now, yes, Stuart reviews, to I love that they have William Hartnell on here, because he is part of the story. I see so many people talking about how, oh, William Hartnell technically wasn't really in it, and I'm just like, yeah, he was. They did what they could. They did what they could. They literally couldn't have him filming. I mean, they could have, but his wife got in the way saying that he couldn't film it. But yeah, just like, I really, oh my god, this cover is amazing. But yeah, Stuart Review stuff did point out that if you take out the fact that it's a multi-doctor story, it's not that cool. Like, it's not a bad story, but it's not really a great story. The only reason that we really talk about it is because of the multi-doctor stuff. And I guess the story of Omega too. But honestly, yeah, I just think that's because of the aspect of the multi-doctor story really just amps it up in the rankings that much. It's not a matter of, oh, well, if you took that out, then it's not a great story. It's like, yeah, that aspect of the story, the multi-doctor part, is an important part of what makes it good. But that doesn't mean that if it's out, then it's not good. If you took all the fan service out of the day of the Doctor, you got basically nothing. Saying that Jamie couldn't star in it, apparently he was gonna have some sort of romance with Joe or whatever, but you know, it would've been nice just to see Jamie. Just, can you imagine if Patrick or Troughton, P Patrick or Troughton? Patrick Troughton or William Hartnell just didn't show up at all? Like, so many people are talking about how William Hartnell's not in it. Yeah, he is. He's on the television screen. Yeah, they do kind of trick you at one point, because it's like the Time Lords call him on, and then they're like, we're gonna send you into the black hole, and you're like, oh my god, is he actually gonna appear, like, with them in the room? And then he doesn't. It's just on the screen. But, like, imagine what we'd be thinking of this story if William Hartnell wasn't in it at all. Suddenly, like, it's, suddenly it just feels a lot more... What's the word? Like, just like, eh. If Patrick Trouton didn't show up, the whole story would be screwed. Yeah, Three Doctors... Yeah. You gotta watch that one. Number three is Spearhead from Space. Got the Blu-ray? Yeah. 
Spearhead from Space is good. It's a good story. It's a good story. And it's short. I, I honestly feel like that is a factor on why this is higher than, say, Doctor and the Silence, is because it's short. It's still, like, movie length, because it's, like, 25 minutes, like, an hour and 40 minutes, but, like, still, like, it's better than a seven-part story. And it's just a really enjoyable story. And I remember when Grandpa, when my Grandpa was watching the scene where the third Doctor was running away in the wheelchair, and he was like, go, go, go! It was just so amazing to just see him have, like, a childlike reaction to it. And, of course, introducing the Otons, even though they only show up once in the classic series again, I'm pretty sure. It's a very nice cover, too. At number two, this is probably going to be a bit of a controversial pick. Like, not controversial, but I doubt that many people will agree with me. It is uh, actually Invasion of the Dinosaurs. I actually thought that this story was really cool. Yes, the dinosaurs are puppets, but, like, ignore that. Like, Doctor Who isn't known for its awesome special effects. I honestly feel like it's really, really cool. And, like, I honestly feel that the cliffhanger at the end of part three, and just, like, you know, you're thinking, like, oh, it's just gonna be six parts of these puppet dinosaurs in London. And then all of a sudden, halfway through, they just leave you with the cliffhanger, where you're like, wait, what the frick? It feels like all of a sudden you're dropped into, like, a space story. And you are, kinda. Which is funny, because the third Doctor's often exiled on Earth. And that's just a completely different story, but it's not a bad thing, because it does come back and connect. And the concept of the Doctor technically being arrested, but Unit is still on his side, trying to make things work out, you know? I'm so worried that the footage is gonna corrupt. I thought it was pretty entertaining, and I really liked watching it. I really liked watching it. It was recently, but, you know, a lot of time has passed. And, uh, I do, I do still feel like this was an excellent story. I also liked reviewing it and making the toy dinosaurs pop up around the place. So next up is Honorable Mention. So this is kind of like number 6 through 10. So, okay. So, honorable mention number one, this is in chronological order, not preference order, because I honestly don't know what my preference order is. So it's The Ambassadors of Death. I got it on three discs, because here's parts one to four, but not labeled. Here's parts one to four, but labeled in crayon. And here's parts five to seven. Yeah, they were really cool. I, I know that some people don't really like them, but I, uh, I like it, the story, but I like it. And I honestly can't really remember much from it, which isn't a good sign, but I do remember that I enjoyed it, and I do like the spacesuit thing, and these are discs are hard to close shut, you don't hear a snap. I'm not sure if you get that. I especially like that scene where, like, you know, the this is, like, at the very end, but where the guys in the spacesuits are coming up, and they're being shot at, but then they just don't even react, and then they come up to that thing that's supposed to stop cars, and then they just lift it up. It's like at that precise moment that you're realizing, like, oh my god, these things are, like, unstoppable. I mean, like, not unstoppable, because they still had to move out of the way, move it out of the way, it's not like they phased through it, but, like, you know, I just felt like that moment where they just lifted it up effortlessly really made me go, like, whoa, these things are powerful. And we got 20 minutes worth of footage already. Makes him shorter you because of my Next is Terror of the Autons, second and final appearance of the Autons, I think, in the classic series. And first appearance of Roger Delgado's Master. And also just an entertaining story. I especially like, I do like clearly remember the part where the third Doctor is tied up in the van, but then he reaches the brake so that the lights, the brake lights at the back of the van turn on, and he starts blinking them in Morse code so that unit can see from behind the bushes. I thought that was extremely clever. Because that is like the Doctor of Superpower. He's just clever. He's able to think on its feet and stuff like that. That's like a really like... It's like a really just think on your feet smart moment, and I liked it. Uh, the Danes. I honestly didn't think that, that was that good, but John Pertwee mentioned in the Pertwee years that this was like his favorite story, or at least part five is his personal favorite episode when he didn't have the option of Frontier and Space Part 6 or Inferno Part 7. I'd almost say any other story that was only existed in black and white, but this only existed in black and white at the time. Uh, yeah. Final Story Season 8. Uh, Master gets captured. Demons are cool. I don't know. So yeah, a good defense on that. Uh, next is The Sea Devils. Kind of a semi-sequel to Doctor Who and the Silurians. Uh, Stuart Review stuff said that it's just Doctor Who and the Silurians again, minus one episode, and the Masters in it, ergo it's better. I don't really necessarily think so. I definitely remember more from Doctor Who and the Silurians than I do from the Sea Devils, maybe because of that ending. Like, I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong please, but uh, Doctor Who and the Silurians, I'm pretty sure it ended with them going into hibernation, and then a, like, a Silurian that's like still just barely awake 
is about to go and just blow up the world, I think? Or, like, extinguish the humans? And then Brigadier blows up the base. And then the Doctor's all angry at the Brigadier. And apparently that's why he has so much of an attitude towards me, is because he's angry that he blew up the Silurian base. But the Doctor is completely unaware that Br the Brigadier actually just saved the human race by doing that. If I'm wrong, then I'm, that's, and I'm incredibly disappointed because that ending is so incredible. It's like, the, yeah, the Doctor's angry at the Brigadier, but he actually did the, well, the right thing, and the Doctor doesn't even know it. The Brigadier doesn't even appear in this story, but we get to see the Doctor sword fight the Master. I introduce the famous Ikea. Oh, no, I Ikea for quite a while. Um, uh, last of the honorable mentions, Planet of the Spiders. This is a Region 2 one because the Region 1 was too expensive at the time. I remember enjoying this one. I reviewed it very recently, more recently than Invasion of the Dinosaurs, obviously. But I thought it was good. I thought it was good. Stuart Review stuff said that he doesn't really like any of it except for Part 6. And yeah, the regeneration effect is super lame. But if you're willing to look past that, like, I remember I once saw this guy listed as the best regeneration story because it was an amazing tribute to his era. I, I, other than the big car chase that everyone was saying was an episode or two episodes when it was only like 12 minutes. I remember I told someone that, and they're like, 12 minutes is a long chase scene. And I'm just like, yeah, but I like chase scenes. One of my favorite movies that I've never seen still is Duel 1971, which is an entire hour and a half long chase scene, I'm pretty sure. Or at least like, you know, I, I know that the last half hour is definitely a chase scene. But yeah, the chase scene is fun, the spiders are cool. This definitely, like, isn't number six or number seven, but it's an honorable mention, because I liked it. And finally, the big number one story. We almost had as much footage as for my Doctor in the Siler interview. But yeah, my number one story, I feel like people already know what it is, because I already said that every season seven story was almost on this list, and I've mentioned Sphere Heaven Space, I've mentioned Doctor on the Silurians, I've mentioned the Ambassadors of Death. Yes, of course, it's Inferno. This happens to be a special edition, but who cares about that? This story was just incredible. I remember that, like, like for a seven-part story, this just, like, flew by. Like, like, I remember I felt kind of sick. Like, this just really kept me entertained. I was I was just I just felt like a little bit tired and stuff like that. This story was just so cool. And just the concept of a parallel universe. This is the only time that a parallel universe is really brought into question. You could argue that the Mind Robber and the Celestial Atomic are kind of like pocket universes or whatever. They really gotta do a sequel to the Mind Robber. I know that Big Finish did it, and I'm planning to like review that story. I'm planning to do Big Finish soon. I feel like they should really try it on screen again. And Inferno is the only one that really talks directly, and I remember the whole sideways in time thing. I brought that to my grandma and grandpa's attention. And they were like, sideways in time? There's no such thing as traveling sideways in time. And, when the, and then they got to this story, and then my grandpa just like, looked at me, and he's just like, don't gloat. <laughs> I, I really, I do, like, I don't think I even mentioned this in my review, but I do just remember how the Doctor is, like, working on the console to get back to his own universe. And then someone asks him, like, what if they connect the power when you haven't connected to the console? And the Doctor's like, oh, well, it doesn't matter because it won't even activate until it's all connected. And then later we cut back to the people who are trying to connect the power, and they're like, if we connect the power but the Doctor hasn't connected it to the console, and they're like, oh, it's okay, it's just... You know, I, I just really loved that. Like, I really loved that, you know? Like, whenever I'm doing a story, whenever I'm doing a story, I really try to find the plot holes before I, you know, I really try to find plot holes in my own story and then fix them. Because <laughs> I, I hate it when someone points out a plot hole, especially when that plot hole kind of ruins the story. Because if something doesn't make sense, and the more it doesn't make sense, the harder it is to ignore it. Especially if it's like a big part, just checking the footage. I really like people who go out of their way to find the plot holes in their own story and then fix them. Or just explain them away with just one line. It doesn't even have to be anything, just explain it with one line. Yeah, like, it's so funny. You know, like, it's always so funny when I stop to think, oh, I'm down to 30 minutes left over room on my camera because the show just showed up. It's so funny when I'm watching a time travel show or a movie and then, like, I'll be thinking, like, okay, they're in the past, or they're in the future. And then I stop to think about it, and I'm just like, but wait, they're not actually really in the past or the future, because they're just filming in, like, a studio or out in a random forest, and it is still the present day. It's just they're pretending like it's the past. And then that kind of really ruins it for a second. I'm just like, no, no, you're supposed to be in the sense. And this is really good at making you think that you're in a parallel universe, because you're like, no, no, it's just a Nicholas Courtney, and they put him in an eye patch and made him talk like an a-hole. But, like, it's really good at making you believe that it's actually a parallel universe. So yeah, those are my top five John Pertwee stories. 
Tell me yours in the comments or give me an entire listing if you want. There they all are. Not all the stories, but all the ones on this list. So, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you did, please like and enjoyed it. If you didn't like it, please would dislike and you did enjoy it. Leave a comment below if you liked my because it was awesome. Guess some motivation and encouragement. If you didn't like it, please would dislike and you did enjoy it. So, like, so that. Where was I? Leave a comment down below if you didn't like it so that and tell me how I can improve for next time, otherwise I won't be able to improve. Just give it to you, just like a like, and subscribe to the next video comes out. Thanks again so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. I've only got like two minutes left before this is longer than the Doctor in the Cellar interview, so... Bye bye Ooh, this is a five minute long clip, that's risky. Oh, what's this? Why is the case already broken, whatever?